What is up everybody, Ben Johnson here, and today we're taking a look at how to color grade your footage so that it can go from this to this. Let's go. All right, welcome back to the channel. As mentioned before, today we are taking a look at color grading. Color grading is a massively important step that can really enhance your footage and a lot of content creators don't even do it. It's really what will allow you to get the most out of your footage. Before we dive into this tutorial, I just wanted to preface it by saying that color correcting in and of itself can be very subjective. There's a lot of different styles and preferences, and there's also a lot of different roadmaps and directions to get to similar results. So for this video today, I just wanted to share with you guys my workflow and how I do it. The first thing to mention before we get started is that I shoot in flat picture profiles. Flat picture profiles basically give you more dynamic range and flexibility in post-production. For most cameras, the default shooting mode is a standard picture profile. In this standard picture profile, the camera itself is applying contrast, saturation, sharpening, and a couple of other things to the image, and it's sort of deciding that stuff for you. If your camera allows you to change this mode, I would recommend doing so. A lot of DSLR and mirrorless cameras will offer log profiles and flat profiles. When you shoot in a log or a flat profile, there's a lot less digital processing being done by the camera, and it puts that control back into your hands when you go to edit. Because of this, the image often looks a little gray, it looks a little desaturated or a little flat, but that's okay. You're gonna be able to pull all of that information back when you color grade. One other thing you guys should know before we get into this is scopes. Video scopes are basically little meters or ways of measuring how your exposure is on your camera. When we are editing and when we're color grading, we're going to be paying attention to our video scopes. We'll be looking at things like a histogram and some other color meters to sort of uh, give us a guide or a parameter of how well our exposure is and how well our colors are. This main video scope that we're going to use in Final Cut today is going to help us with our exposure. The top line in this scope represents the highlights. If you pass this line while you're color correcting, it basically means that your highlights will be blown out. And when they're blown out, it means that all of that detail is gone and it's just pure white. Likewise, on the bottom end of this scope, is the line that represents the shadows. If you go past this line, it means that your shadows are essentially getting crushed to the point where they are pure black and you lose detail there as well. The goal here is to keep our exposure between these two lines so that we get the most amount of detail in our image. Okay, so we are here in Final Cut Pro and we have imported our clip into our timeline that we're going to color grade today and we are about to start. For today's video, I wanted to show you the tool that I use on all of my color grading edits, which is Color Finale. I absolutely love this tool. It gives you a bit more options and a little bit more control and just a nicer interface to work with when color grading inside of Final Cut Pro. This is a paid plugin. I believe it's about $150 for the pro version but I think that you can go onto their website and download a demo version for a limited amount of time to allow you to try it out. So if you guys wanna to go to their website, I'll put a link down in the description and you can download and follow along. All right, so the first thing to do, no matter what program you are in, is to make a color correction. By correction, I mean I wanna get this shot looking as natural to the human eye as possible. To accomplish this, I will add in a color wheel. The color wheel tab gives you a ton of flexibility and I really, really love the interface of it. The first wheel represents the shadows, the second is the midtones, and the third is the highlights, and there's an additional saturation slider on the end. 
when it comes to correction, I will typically start with the highlights and I'll make sure that they are getting, you know, close to the top of that line. We're not passing it because we don't want to blow it out. Or if the shot was already blown out, I will try my best to recover what I can. Once I have my highlights where I want them, I will go ahead and mess with the shadows. Then I'll go to the shadows and I'll bring them down just a little bit so that they hit the bottom of that line. Not passing it because that will crush it, but just getting it right around or maybe slightly above that bottom line on our scope. Then I will adjust the mid-tones and I'll try to get it roughly in the middle. Next, I'm going to bring up the saturation slider, which is really when we'll start to see our footage start to come to life. I'm gonna bring this up until the point where I feel it looks most natural. You can also adjust the colors of the shadows, mid-tones, and highlights respectively. Take our highlights, for example. If I select a point and start dragging it around the color wheel, you'll begin to notice that the image changes. Depending on which color I drag it to, the highlights will become more of that color. This is the same for our shadows and midtones. So as you can see, there's a lot of different options and styles that you could accomplish using these color wheels, but for now, let's just focus on getting the image corrected and looking natural. Once that is done, we'll move to the next step. All right, now that our image is corrected and it's looking pretty natural, we will go ahead and add in a LUT. For these purposes, you can think of a LUT sort of like a photo preset or a filter for video. For this video today, I'm going to apply my custom creative LUT. One of the things I love about Color Finale is that any of these adjustment layers like my color wheels or the LUT layer or any other ones that I add in, I can actually fine tune and adjust the transparency or the opacity of each of these layers. So you can really get into the details when using this program. Once I've added in the LUT, it's time to move on to the next step. All right, let's recap what we've done so far. We have added a correction layer and got our footage looking more natural. And then we added in our LUT, which gave it a little bit more of style. In this last step, we're going to fine tune things and really see what we wanna push and adjust for this particular shot. For starters, I will add in an additional color wheel. Sometimes when you add a LUT, your scopes will adjust. And so I just want to readjust with this color wheel. I will drag my highlights and my shadows back to the lines because I actually want a little bit more of a contrasty look. However, after looking at this, I think I want a little extra punch of that blue and pink from my background lights. Man, if only there was a way where I could just single those colors out. Well, with Color Finale, there is. Go ahead and add in a Color Selections tab. This is one of the reasons I absolutely love Color Finale because I can actually single out any of these individual colors. Let me show you how this works. I wanted to get a little bit more blue and pink out of my image. So I'm gonna start by adding that Color Selections tab and moving to the blue option. Then I'm going to move my saturation slider up and you'll notice as I do this, the blue in the image starts to get more saturated. I will do this with the pink as well. Now I don't wanna to do too much with the pink because you have to be mindful of skin tones. Pink, yellow, red, orange, all of those colors sort of make up skin complexities. So you don't wanna to mess too much with that. Just be careful as you adjust. I'll play around with these settings until I get the desired look. All right, let's check out the final result. So you may be thinking, cool, I've corrected a clip. Do I have to do this every single time? No, you don't have to do it every single time. If you have done a color correction and you wanna add it to another clip on your timeline, you can simply select the clip that you've colored and hit Command C. Then select the clip that you want to apply this color correction to and hit shift command V. A selections tab will open up, make sure that color finale is selected along with whatever other selections you want, and then go ahead and hit enter. This will apply the setting. It's as simple as that. If you find yourself shooting in the same room a lot with the same angle and the same lighting, and you want to sort of streamline this color correction workflow, you can actually use color finale to create your own LUT. This way, whenever you're done shooting your YouTube videos or your projects and you want to bring your clips into your timeline, you can now simply apply one LUT and it will do all of this for you. Keep in mind, you don't need Color Finale and Final Cut Pro to do all of this stuff. Whatever program you're using, you can still follow the simple steps of correcting, adding a LUT, and fine tuning. 
All right, everybody, that's going to about wrap up this video. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this and found some value from it. If you guys are interested in what type of gear that I use or, or maybe where I get my music or my video effects, I've placed a ton of links down in the description as a resource for you. Before you guys leave, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, turn on notifications, and as always, stay creative. Peace.